What's the deal, YouTube? It's your girl, Miss Honey. Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back, welcome back, welcome back to the channel, everybody. It's your girl, Miss Honey. You guys already know what this is. This is Saturday night. This is part two of Beyondless Fix My Life. Um, female felons last week. Thank you guys so much who watched my video and left comments down below left your thumbs up subscribe because of the video it means so much to me that you guys are coming back week after week for this content i really appreciate it i love watching the show i like i really really like Iyanla. i don't care what anybody says about her and i really really um like watching the show um for me personally i learned a very long time ago that um it is important to check your own gate you know what i mean before you start hollering about what's going on with somebody else you gotta sweep around your own front door first before you try to sweep around somebody else's front door and i feel like this show is all about that like what is going on with you acknowledging those things coming to terms with with those things celebrating those things or and or changing what you need to change just to be a better person to be a better mom to be a better sister to be a better friend whatever so yeah i like this show and i like the fact that you guys like it <laughs> and i like the fact that you guys like that i like it okay so yeah um new to my channel go ahead and hit that subscribe button i really appreciate it and personally i just don't think you'll regret it <clears throat> give me a thumbs up don't forget that notification bell you don't want to miss any videos i mean i think today i've already dropped three videos so yeah i typically don't drop pack the back videos like this so you don't have to worry about getting uh bell after bell after bell like i'm not gonna fill your timeline up or anything like that um but right now it's a lot going on it's a lot i want to talk about and um so yeah and of course, you guys, don't forget to comment down below. Now, let's talk about this female felons. Um, this is part two. And we start out with Matilda. Uh, I apologize, you guys, as you can see. I don't know why I always get turned around. But anyway, um, my fan is blowing. I'm sorry. I'm human. So hopefully you guys can hear me just fine. But anyway, um... So yeah, we start out with Matilda, our 65-year-old ex, um, ex-convict. It seems like I shouldn't say that, but anyway, I, I hate labeling people, but yeah, she's an ex, ex-convicted felon. Um, we don't talk as much about Brandy and her situation. Brandy is in this um, part two, and she's lending some real jewels, some real sound advice. Brandy kind of came to terms with things early on when in first episode when iyala had that conversation with her about what's the difference between her and a prostitute something clicked for brandy and she gets it she gets it she understands and she's moving forward we do get to talk a little bit more with um tai and um iyala has a a exercise that she does with tai where she um, all the ladies, I think, had been in a room and they, you know, had this wall where they could write on and, you know, write their truths and write, you know, things out. And this is like their own personal green room, but they also were doing homework and working on themselves and reflecting and that type of thing. Anyway, Tai um, gets to sit in this chair and she's looking in this mirror and Yana's asking her what she sees. And um, of course, you know, she we know from part one she's not very talkative she's kind of shut down i mentioned in my last video she seems to have a bit of wall uh, a, a, a thick wall built up um we know that she grew up in a crack house her mom was an addict uh, we know that she had hopes and dreams that um left were left unfulfilled because um she went to prison you know um for a man and because of a man so anyway um she's got walls built up just from even a small child she doesn't say much she doesn't weigh in very much even when you ask her a direct question um it's like i don't know it's like she can't articulate it and yana you know is asking her questions about 
what she sees and she says brokenness and what does that mean for you it's just all in pieces not a whole person um and so she tells her close your eyes close your eyes and speak from your heart you know this is this is really good this is really good because when you close those eye gates you close off distractions right and you're able to it think more introspectively um easier right so um she, then she takes this chain and what i remember my girlfriend um she really got pulled over for a traffic stop and then she found out her license was suspended and the guy took her into jail and it was very traumatizing to her and because she's a very sensitive person and she's able to articulate how she feels one of the things she talks about is the sound of the clanking of the doors and the keys and the knocking and the, like like you're in prison you you are being confined but there is some mental things that go on when you hear that metal and the clanking and the chains and the walking and the keys and the slamming and the hollering like you begin to feel something deep down inside and so when iyana had this big heavy metal chain and she threw it on the floor and it was like something uh, awakened in Tai, and then she dropped it again and she kept dropping and she kept dropping until there was this breaking this shifting and she said what does your five-year-old self need what does your five-year-old need what does your five-year-old need and she said help tell me again help tell me again i need help Ooh, whoo i said girl girl you know sometimes that's what you need you need to move from this place you'll get stuck there you can't find your way around it and there's just something that that shifts you and you move up you level up something breaks in you something changes something washes over you okay and it's not a regular feeling it you feel like i mean just the way she cried and she held her and just told her that that um poor baby poor baby poor baby and i really feel like something shifted in her just like something shifted in brandy and just like something's gonna shift for miss matilda okay because tai after this she's speaking up she's putting her opinion in she's talking about her sons and how they felt and, and revealing some things that she probably hasn't even really said out loud to anybody else <coughs> excuse me you guys some revelations about her own son as she's sitting there and she's talking with um a matilda's two daughters you know and kind of relating the two and i was like tae come on girl come through with your testimony come through listen come through with your testimony sis later on at the end of the show when everything is said and done we see that not only is she working the process not only is she starting to speak up for herself more but she is also she has also started a non-profit for children of incarcerated of the incarcerated i'm telling you i'm telling you if you trust the process if you trust the process if you just trust the process okay all right so now let's go ahead and talk about um miss matilda okay so miss matilda we start from where we left off last week was when um iyana was talking to keisha which i think is um matilda's 28 year old daughter um and then later on we'll get a chance to talk with nicole which i think nicole is 25 they both have children we learned last week that miss matilda has 12 children we also learned that um she was a bit of a drug user addict i think um when she went off to jail um we also additionally this week learned that there are not only are there 12 children but what happened with the other two was she was um i guess convicted of child abuse uh and she went to prison for the first time when she went to prison 18 years that was the second time the first time it had something to do with child abuse and she went away for five years okay when um um iyana talks to keisha about 
what how she feels about her mom she's really thinking about how much she missed with her mother you know um and later on when she talks to all the ladies together this is when Tai spoke up so beautifully about what went on with her children all together they sit down she she begins to say um that she missed a lot miss matilda missed a lot she missed her first day of high school she missed graduation she missed the birth of her child nicole says the same thing too turns out nicole the 25 year old daughter had a child at 15 too and um she needed her mom there her mom wasn't there she didn't know how to be a mother she had never you know really her mom left to go to prison when she was six so she she never had that mother's love she never had you know help with being a mom her son's name is montez and we're going to talk a little bit more about that later but <clears throat> it was just a really really poignant moment um when when we learn about everything that's going on with Matilda, some of the fantasy lies she has told. The one thing I was really, really proud of, of Iyanla for is if she did it, we don't know because it wasn't on this video. But I was really proud of the fact that she didn't go in and say anything about the fact that she was on drugs. See, she what she did was took the biggest piece. She took the biggest part of the elephant and she tackled that. She didn't tackle that drug part because one, she's not on drugs anymore. And two, it was going to take away from the fact that she was carrying this huge, huge weight of the fact that she had given two of her children away or two of her children had been taken from her. And when she comes into the room, the, the individual green room that Matilda's in and Matilda's written some things, of course, in that column about truth she didn't have very much all right because we learned that uh, matilda's been kind of living a fantasy life and uh, uh iana asked her if she was ready to trust her and, and tell her truth and she says yes she says what can you tell me about what's on this paper she shows her the paper and it's 12 names all 12 of the names of her children and of course she just starts yes, she starts here when i asked you if you had how many kids you had you told me 10 i told you 10 to 12 that's not how children work there's no 10 to 12 you know what i'm saying like it's or either or you know what i'm saying like this is the first this is the first step you know she's just getting a good good running jog in she's just jogging now you know <clears throat> and young um asks her a couple of more questions about but you have 12 children um well that that you know i'm and you know and she says but you're not telling the truth about that matilda and matilda's like listen this is a part of my life that has been taken care of it has been done it has been dealt with and it's no more it's not who i am anymore this is not who i am anymore and so she says it but it's not true matilda it's a part of, of a fantasy that you've been telling people and it's not the truth it is the truth. What what do you want me to tell them? That I was raped in my own bed? I was like, oh, oh, it was heavy. It was heavy. It was heavy. Because just as you want to point the finger at Matilda for being a liar and being a drug addict and going to jail and having so many children, you realize, golly, golly, this lady been through a lot. And my heart breaks for her. It really does. Oh, y'all, it's some people out here in this world. My, 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 my. How they're functioning, how they're moving, how they're putting left foot in front of right foot, in front of left foot, in front of right foot, and making it, I don't even know. I don't even know. It's a wonder. It's a wonder. Did this lady don't have a whole full on separate life somewhere dressed all in pink chiffon and, and, and little imaginary birdies and butterflies twitting around her head as she swirls around with a, a beautiful strawberry cake. You know what I'm saying? Like full on fantasy. Hmm. It's a wonder. The woman was raped at least twice. 
in her own bed and had two children and probably hated those children because she hated the rape. She hated the rapist. I'm sure. Anyway, she's in full gallop now. I won't talk about it. I won't discuss this. Yana said, well, if you want to break through it, you got to talk about it. I will not discuss this. I said, okay, Tamar. Okay. All right. Okay. And Iyana says, you are a liar. You're a liar. Okay. And, 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 um, well, after she tells her that she's a liar, she says, you know, she talks to her about, um, when you get ready to stand in your truth, I'll be here. And, and Matilda said, I will, God. I said, you thank you, God. You think? <laughs> I said, boy, oh boy, Tamar, I tell you what. And I'm not trying to make light of Tamar's situation, but I want to go ahead and put this forth because we're hearing a lot about Iyanla and On or On and Iyanla, whichever one allegedly may be trying to um, bring suit against Tamar for what she said. They really don't want it to be a legal suit, but they want her to apologize. But I just want to say that because this is what people go through when they will, they will go down with the ship. They will do anything from keeping this truth from coming out it ain't that they don't want you to know it's they don't want to say it they don't want to acknowledge it they don't want to take ownership of it okay not blame not blame ownership like this ain't me if i don't deal with it if i don't acknowledge it it ain't true it ain't so all right yana leaves out and uh, of course, that's when she goes and she talks to Nicole and she finds out Nicole, uh, Matilda's 25 year old daughter had a baby at, at 15. And um, one of the things I realized is that Matilda feels like because she went to prison and she paid her debt to society, that the debt to her children is also paid, but it isn't, it is not. Nicole has the greatest resentment. Now, I wouldn't even say the greatest, but Nicole has a great sense of resentment to her mom because like I said, she missed the birth of her child and helping her raise her child and just school and graduating. And she's got a ring on, so she must have gotten married. I don't know if that was before or after jail and um, or prison. And um, she talks about how she went through postpartum depression. She wanted to kill herself and kill her baby. Boy, oh boy, that's a cold breeze that blew through that room. And I'm going to tell you something. It says a lot about an individual that can say that out loud. Take ownership of it oh, out loud. I, I was depressed severely. I wanted my life to be over and the life of my baby. And then sister... Sister Keisha tells her she walked into the kitchen and she saw Nicole in the kitchen beating her belly, beating her belly. And she didn't know what she was doing. She thought it strange. They begin to hug. See what I'm saying? You breaking it. You tearing it down. When you start telling the truth, when you start owning it, when you start acknowledging it, it can't stand. That wall can't stand. It's got to crumble. It's a, it, it, it creates a weakness in the structure of it. And Iyana is encouraging them when they go into this courtroom setting where Matilda will be tried by the court of life, the daughters and the, and the, the adopted daughters and the biological daughters must begin to tell the truth. They must hold Matilda accountable for the truth. That's the only way she's going to be able to move forward and be who she needs to be, not only for herself, but for her children. Before the ladies leave out, um, the adopted daughters, Brandy and Tyee, had an opportunity to hear from Matilda's children and share with Matilda's children about what they knew about Matilda and what the, the uh, biological children shared with um Tyee and Brandy, what um, some things that Matilda may not have told them. And they also learn a little bit more about how their children must have felt when they were sent off to prison, how it must have affected their children. Because remember, 
They were six and I think like eight when Matilda went to jail, went to prison. And um, and um, Tyee and Brandy's kids wasn't far off from that. All right, so we get into the courtroom setting and uh, Matilda still got it. Like she's in full sprint right now. When the daughter walks in, uh, Nicole walks in, Nicole kind of gets pissed off because Matilda won't acknowledge it. She tells her, I need you to be you know the mom i missed i need you to and and she said well you know i'm a, i'm trying i'm trying that's why i said about she said she paid for it i paid for that i went to prison i paid for that and the young asked her well what did you think was gonna happen when you went off the prison she said i thought i was gonna get away with it just like everybody else that committed crime and think they're gonna get away with it you know i had mouths to feed so she said well you didn't have to have 12 kids you didn't have to have 12 kids you kept having kids and kept having to feed kids. All right. But what's done is done. But you need to acknowledge it. You need to acknowledge that. This is what your kids need to hear. That you acknowledge it. I know you're sorry. I get it. You're sorry. But tell me why you're sorry. Sorry I wasn't there for you. No, 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 no. Not just that. I'm sorry I left you. I'm sorry I, I, I fostered an environment that, that, that allowed me to be taken away from you. Okay. Um, and she has to acknowledge the fact that she cannot do anything to make up for leaving Nicole at six. She can't go back. She can only go forward. Well, she will not acknowledge it. She will not believe it. I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. But you cannot, Ezekiel. Okay, you cannot Ezekiel turn back time. Okay, all right, you cannot do that. All right, you can't go back to when your daughter was six and raise her. First of all, you're so broken. First, you must fix yourself before you can help your daughters, before you can be there for your daughters. It took the longest time for her to acknowledge that. Brandy tried to get her to talk about it. I'm not gonna say that, Brandy. I'm not gonna say that I can't be there for her. And Iyama gave her a way to phrase it. Now, before she did it, uh, she basically uh, threw a couple of little bit more <laughs> shade at uh, Iyama. And told Iyama, Iyama say, well, you know, what you guys got, well, what you're saying is that we need a psychologist and not you. Iyama's like, what you need is to be quiet and let me finish saying what I got to say. Well, I guess I just feel that way. This is deflecting. Okay, this is deflecting because you were speaking from a real shady, aggressive place, Matilda. But when Iyanla gathered you together, you decided to fix it. I guess I just feel that way because I want so much to be there for them. And I'm trying to get what you were saying. No, you're trying to be defensive. You're trying to take a jab because I've exposed you. Okay, and this is your very, very last ditch effort to hold on to your lies. To, to, to deflect and not take accountability for your lies. That's what it is. That's what it is. Let's call a thing a thing. Call a thing a thing. So, um, finally, after Iyana gives her what to say and she repeats it to Nicole. And Nicole says, I understand, mama. And she gets up and she gives her a hug. And then um, they bring Keisha in. And Keisha just told her. She said, mom, I missed you. You were my best friend. And you were gone. I didn't have you anymore. You know, and it was at this moment that Matilda breaks down. She just breaks down and starts crying. I mean, it's almost like a like a scream, but she's screaming into her hands and a tissue, and she is just shaking her head. It's tough. It's a tough pill to swallow, okay? Especially when you, you've added layer after layer after layer after layer onto that thing. It gets bigger and and, and and more cumbersome to swallow every day. But if we break it apart, if we chip away at it and take a little bit by little bit by little bit, we can overcome anything. And like Iyana say, break that pathology. What was done to Matilda, um, Matilda's mom, and, and by Matilda's mom to Matilda, Matilda eventually passed that thing on down to her children. 
and, and she talked to the kids about admitting these things, admitting who your mother was, being honest about it. And Iyana tells them, she said, I had to admit my mother was a drunken whore. She laid with a man in his mama's house and, the, and the, a married man in his mama's house and his wife lived around the corner. I had to say what it was. I couldn't put this fantasy on it. You know, she was an alcoholic and no, she was a drunk and a whore. Your mom was a drug addict. Nicole, Keisha, your mom was a drug addict and, and, and a felon. Okay. She's not that person now. But acknowledging it, both the kids acknowledging it and her acknowledging it, it's important because you can say I'm different, I've changed, I've moved forward. You can articulate it when you acknowledge it. This was a really, really good episode, you guys. A really, really good episode. Um, one of the things that Yala said was uh, she said to the to the girls, to uh, Matilda's birth daughters, that you guys have a very painful ancestry line. And it's worth acknowledging because you also have to forgive your mom. You know, you have to hold her accountable, but you have to forgive her too because she's been so wounded and so broken. You know, you you have to acknowledge that she just never even had the tools. She wasn't really that mom to you before she went into 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 prison. She couldn't be. She had addictions and she had had distractions. There's a lot of forgiveness and and, and um, repentance that needs to be that needs to happen all the way around. It's not exclusive to one person. Okay, and this is how we start the process of healing. I love Iyama. I love her. I know people say what they got to say about her, but I've said it before. I'll say it again. If you don't really, really like Iyana, you're not feeling Iyana, you might not be a person that likes to dig deeper. Um, you might like to deal with things on a more lighter scale. Um, if you're an individual that likes to unpack and resolve and deal with, um, you're going to like Iyama. That's all I got to say about that. You guys tell me what you think, what y'all think about this episode. Put it down below. Until next time, honeybees. Mwah, mwah, mwah.